right? These things are creeping little animals, right? Nasty little disgusting things that we shouldn't be eating. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 66, right? In verse number 15, we're going to deal with a prophecy concerning Christ in the book of Isaiah. And it's going to touch on pork, shrimp, crab, and lobsters, right? And sisters, if y'all don't know, right? Just to give y'all a synopsis of what's going on here, right? We believe that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, right? Uh -huh. So what we're doing right now is we're teaching this brother commandments that we have to be keeping in these last days, right? If you guys uh, stick around, we can show y'all exactly how we know that we are those people that the Bible is speaking about, right? right. Just so that there's no doubt in your guys' mind and that you guys understand the difference between truth and a doctrine, right? That's right. What we're bringing out is truth right here, but nevertheless, right? <clears throat> Give me Isaiah 66 and 15. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 15. Right. Behold. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. And this is an end time prophecy, right? This is talking about the second coming of Christ when the world is going to end, right? And we're coming close to those days. We're extremely close. Prophecies are coming to pass. And we know that what? Hey, the days are changing and getting quicker, quicker. And this is how we know that what? Christ is on his way back, right? Read. To render his anger. To render his what? To, to render, render his, his anger. anger. So the Lord is going to come back to render his anger. Uh, besides the contrary belief that people say, you know, Christ is coming back with hugs and kisses, man. Hey, no, Christ, Christ is coming back with the spirit of his father. Give me Exodus 15 and 3, right? Christ is coming back with the spirit of his father that's in heaven. Because Christ only does the will of his father, right? Let's see what the Heavenly Father is, right? Bring that out. Exodus 15 and 3. Right. The Lord is a man of war. What the Lord say? The, the Lord, Lord is, is a man, man of war. That's why you have all these wars going on, man, right? Everybody thinks that anybody can just do anything. No, a man's goings are of the Lord, right? That's really crazy to think that the Heavenly Father, who's all-powerful, the Almighty Heavenly Father that created everything, His creations can just rebel against them. No, the Lord has a movie going on. And everybody has to play their role, right? There's a, there's a good, there's an evil. There's a hero and a protagonist, right? These are the things that are going on. So you just, you just either fit in with the hero or you fit in with the, with the, uh, with the evildoers, right? Everything has a, 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 a harmony in what it's doing. But nevertheless, the Heavenly Father is a man of war. So when Christ comes back, he's coming back to render that anger that the Heavenly Father has, right? We're touching on shrimp, crab, lobsters, and these things, these things that filter out the sea, right? Imagine you're the almighty, powerful, heavenly father, and you come up with a law and you tell these creations that you created, hey, don't eat these things, Why? right? And scientifically, we can see that what? Hey, they clean out the ocean. Right now, we're eating these things, and the ocean is defiled. If you look at before and after pictures of the coral reefs, they used to be beautiful pink, green, blues, oranges at the bottom of the sea. Now it's just brown, right? Because we're taking those things that the Heavenly Father literally created right. to clean out the sea. Right. So when the Heavenly Father sees this, he's going to be angry. Like, yo, I created shrimp, crab, and lobster to make my ocean beautiful and pure. And here y'all are disobeying what I told y'all not to do and making my, my uh, hey, a, a man is very prideful about his garden, right? About his, about his lawn. How much the Heavenly Father about, his, about the uh, creation of the earth? Right? Read on. To render his anger with fury. Right. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Right. For by fire and by his sword would the Lord plead with all flesh. And that fire and sword that he's pleading with the flesh is this word. Right. Because he literally gave it to you. So when the Lord comes back, he's going to kind of have this in his hand. He's going to say, well, were you doing this? Were you doing that? Well, what's your excuse? It's right here. Right. Read on. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. It says the slain of the Lord shall be many in that day. Why? Because there's going to be a lot of people that continue in the rebellion of the Heavenly Father. Even though he gave us a time period, which is Christ's grace, right? You know what a grace period is. That's a time for you to get back to where you were supposed to be at the beginning. We were already created and supposed to be obedient to the Heavenly Father. Right. Nevertheless, he gave us a grace period to come back, right? Same way you got a grace period with your rent. You're supposed to pay it on the first, but we'll give you to the 14th. That doesn't mean you don't pay the rent back. Right by the 13th, you need to have you need to have that rent money. That's so right. on the 14th, it's ready. Right, that grace period is getting shorter and shorter. So what do we have to do? We have to come back to the heavenly Father. Right, but nevertheless, read on. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves right. in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. What is pork? Eating, eating swine's flesh. flesh. Right. So this is the prophecy continuing about Christ coming back, and it's saying those that 
sanctify and purify themselves in the garden, right? And this is a similar to for people basically covering up them, their sins, right? Similar to Adam and Eve in the uh, Garden of Eden. Those who are covering up these things that they're doing, right? Eating swine's flesh, read on. And the abomination. And the abomination in Leviticus, if you, uh, I don't know if they read it, right? But it told you that what? Hey, the shrimp, crab, lobster, anything that doesn't have fins and scales are an abomination unto the Lord, right? right? And abominations are things that the Lord hates. And it also says that those who fear the Lord also hate those things, right? Read on. And the mouse. And the mouse, right? So the Lord liking pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster to a rat. And you wouldn't eat a rat, right? So you can't eat those things. They're That's all right. one and the same. A rat will eat anything. It's disgusting, right? Read on. Shall be consumed together. Shall be what? Shall, Shall be, be consumed, consumed together. together. Hey, those people are going to know death by pain, right? Because the Heavenly Father gave us a list of things, right? Give me 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3, right? Give me 1 John 5 and 3, because all we're doing is reading the commandments. Right, and a lot of people take these things and they say, man, this is hard, right? Ah, the shrimp, crawfish, I don't know about that, man. I got a crawfish boil to go to next week, right? Pork, I like bacon burgers. That's what, that's what our people say, right? Read that. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Right. For this is the love of God. Right. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. So this is how you love the Heavenly Father, by keeping his commandments, right? Read on. And his commandments. Are not no, it's hard. Are not not grievous. Grievous. Right? It's that the Bible says his commandments are not grievous. The Heavenly Father didn't say, you got to run 10 miles every day or you're not keeping my commandment. He said, don't eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. Right. How hard is it not to order that? Right. right? He said, don't eat bacon. He said, don't eat pork chops. Man. It's not hard. Right? The fringes. Right? We read Numbers 15 and 38 on to you. Right? That's not hard to put these on the borders of your garments. Right? We can... We can go. We can go to uh, different stores and match up the socks with the shoes, and then I'll go to this store so I can get that that fly shirt that matches this. How hard is it to put the fringes on the borders of your garments? Right? It's not hard. It's pretty easy, right? So we have to take into account these things and understand them. Did, did the brother expound to you what the Sabbath day was? The Sabbath day, Exodus 35 and two. Right? Give me Genesis chapter one and uh, verse number 14. The book of Exodus. 35 and 2. Right. Six days shall work be done. So the Heavenly Father says six days shall work be done. Right? Read on. But on the seventh day. On the what? On, on the, the seventh, seventh day, day. Right. There shall be an holy day. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. So the Heavenly Father said that the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. Give me Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 3, I believe. Right? Genesis. Yeah, come. Genesis yeah, chapter me two. 2 and verse 2. Right. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, right. which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. So the heavenly father rested on the seventh day. Read on. From all his work, which he had made. Read on. And God blessed the seventh day. What did the Lord do? And God blessed the seventh day. So the heavenly father blessed the seventh day. Right. Read on. And sanctified it. And did what? And, and sanctified it. Right. Because that in it. He had rested from all his work, right. which God created and made. So the heavenly father rested on the seventh day. How much more his servants, right? If you're a servant of the heavenly father, right? How much more is the servant unto the master? If right. the master's doing this, surely the servants are, right? So if we're a servant of God, we have to understand that the heavenly father himself rested on the seventh day. So must we, right? Read on in uh, 35 and 2. But on the seventh day, there shall be a holy day. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Right. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Shall what? Shall, shall be, put be put to, to death. death. So this is a serious commandment. The Lord said if you're doing work, you shall be put to death. When we read you the Numbers 15 and 38 commandment, right, if you read up above that, the Lord gave that decree to the children of Israel because a man was found picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. Right? Picking up sticks. Yeah. He was, they, were, they found him picking up sticks and they asked Moses, what should we do? Right. And Moses went to the Lord and the Lord said to stone him to death. Right. Because he was picking up sticks on the Lord's holy day. Right. So that's a serious commandment to the heavenly father. Right. It's a part of the Ten Commandments that our uh, that our churches teach, but they don't even keep it. Right. Because what day is the seventh day? The seventh day of the week It's Saturday. Exactly. And Sunday is the first day of the week. Right. So what the, the, if, the, if Saturday is the seventh day of the week, what day do we have to keep the Sabbath day? If Saturday is the seventh day and the Sabbath is the seventh day, Saturday is the day we keep the Sabbath, right? Yeah. 
even when you look at uh, Spanish. So why do they celebrate on Sunday? Why do they do it on Sunday? Because the, the, those who be in power, right, profess themselves to be God. That's why they give you images like white Jesus, right? Because they believe themselves that they are God. This is why they tell you who you are and what you are, right? They profess your own nationality. Nevertheless, they didn't create you, right? Because they, they esteem themselves to be God. This is why they tell you, uh, this is why they, 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 they're, they're trying to um, transform men into women, women into men, giving abortions and things of this nature. All of those things are works that the Heavenly Father has the power to do. Nevertheless, they take it upon themselves. Holidays, right? That comes from holy days. But how can a man esteem a day better than another and he didn't create them, right? The Heavenly Father created the days. So the only day that's better than a different day is the ones that the Heavenly Father said. And he has holy days in the Bible, right? The Sabbath day is a holy day unto him, right? That's a holiday where they get the word holiday from, right? But nevertheless, right, the, 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 the seventh day of the week is Saturday, right? But when does Saturday begin, right? When does a day begin? Yeah, when does a new day begin? How do you know it's a new day? That's what they tell us. Nothing changes at 12, right? So in the ancient days, if we didn't have a clock on our on our uh, stool, what are we supposed to do? How would we know there was a different day? That's by the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon, right? Bring that out. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Right. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Right. And let them be for signs and for seeds. For what? For, for signs, signs and for seeds. So the heavenly father put the sun and the moon in the firmament, which is the sky. And he said, let these things be for signs. Right. A sign tells you something. Right. And seasons. And what else? Read on. And for days. And, and for what? And, and for days. So this is how you're going to know what a day is. Right. Read on. And years. And years. Right. Jump to uh, read verse uh, number four. Five. Salah. Salah. And God called the light day. Right. And the darkness he called night. Right. And the evening. And the what? And the evening. So the evening, read on. And the morning. And the morning. Were the first day. Were the first day. Right? So when does the day start? It starts when the sun goes down. That that when the sun goes down, that was the end of yesterday and the beginning of today. Right? So yeah, so, because what you have to understand is, is that, read uh, Genesis 1 and verse 1. Genesis 1 and 1. Right? In the beginning. In the what? In the beginning. So watch this. It says, in the beginning, right? Read. God created the heaven and the earth. Right. And the earth was without form. Right. And void. Right. And darkness. And what? And darkness. So the, the earth started with darkness, right? Mm -hmm. And just like everything else, everything starts in darkness. Brother, you started in darkness, right? And right now you're coming unto the light, right. right? The day starts with darkness and now it's coming into the light, right? A new moon starts in what? Darkness, right? And it comes into light, right? Everything starts the same exact way. So your day begins at what time? When the sun goes down, that's the beginning of a day, right? So when would the Sabbath day start? Does it start at 12 a.m.? No, it starts when? The sun, it starts at sundown on Friday. That's the end of Friday when the sun goes down, right? Yeah. And that's the beginning of Saturday, the Sabbath day. So the Sabbath day is, is the beginning, right? Right. So the beginning of the Sabbath day starts on Friday at sundown. Oh, so sun go down, the that's the end. When the sun goes down, that's the end of Friday and the beginning of the next day. Everything starts in the darkness. Right. Everything starts in darkness and it comes into light, right? Give me uh the book of Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31. But hold, don't don't drop Exodus 35. Right? Give me Nehemiah 10 and 31. Well, you could go to Exodus 35, because he grabbing Nehemiah. Go back to Exodus 35. Right? Nehemiah 10 and 31. Right, bring that out. And if the people of the land right? bring wear or any victuals. So it's saying the people of the land, if they bring clothing or anything like a a, a I don't know, necklaces or whatever, victuals. There's just merchandise, right? Read on. On the Sabbath day to on, sell. On the Sabbath day to sell, right? Read on. That we would not buy it of them. Hey, Nehemiah is saying we're not going to buy anything from anybody that's bringing us something to sell on the Sabbath day. Why is that? Because those who are bringing things to sell are doing what? They're working, right? And even if you're not physically working, you can't provide or you can't, uh, 
you can't help someone uh, transgress the Sabbath day, right? They're transgressing the Sabbath day, so you don't want to be a part of that, right? So you don't buy anything on the Sabbath day either, right? Because even though HEB's not keeping the Sabbath day, you can't go to HEB and then buy food from HEB, right? Because they're transgressing the Lord's Sabbath day, right? So on the Sabbath day, you don't buy or sell. You do everything in preparation before the sun goes down on Friday, That's right. right? You have six days to do all of these things. That's Get right. your groceries, clean your house, right. clean your car, right. go to work, That's make right. your money, everything, right? And then on, once the sun falls on, on Friday, right, once it goes down, you begin your Sabbath and you keep it all the way till the sun goes down on Saturday. Right now, we're closing out our Sabbath, right? In a few hours, it'll be Sunday, right? So nevertheless, brother, you can't work, cook. Oh, uh, read, read on in Exodus 35 and uh, 3. Exodus 35 and 3. Right. You shall kindle no fire. Throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Right, so you can't kindle a fire, meaning you can't uh, cook anything on the Sabbath day. You understand that? So there's no cooking, no buying, no selling, no work, no cleaning, none of that on the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day, it's given to you to do the, the work of the Lord and to rest, right? That's the only thing you should be doing on the Sabbath days, right? So the commandments that we gave to you were what? What were the commandments that we gave to you? Keep the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was last. The first, the first one um, was of the. No, the first one was no. Uh, fringes. The second was of pork. The first one was fringes. Fringes. Last one is the Sabbath day. Okay, boom. Pork Sabbath day, right? Give me the book of Exodus chapter uh, four and twenty-seven. Give me Exodus chapter five and verse five, right? The book of Exodus four and twenty-seven. Right. Look, and the Lord said unto Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. Let me see. What you want here? 24? La ah. I'm sorry, Leviticus 4 and 27. My bad. Leviticus 5 and 5. I'll say Exodus. Salaki. Leviticus 4 and 27. Right. And if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, right. while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord. So you were sinning in ignorance, brother, right? You were you were uh, transgressing the Sabbath day, these things of the nature, all these commandments that we were bringing out to you, right? Because sin is the transgression of the law, right? That's why we're giving you the law. Because what? You're sinning in ignorance, right? So give me the book of Leviticus chapter 19, right? And verse uh, 27. Leviticus 19 and 27. Right, I'm gonna give you another commandment, brother. Ye shall not... You sh ye shall not round the corners of your head. Right. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. So you can't make your head round, brother, right? Which would be bald in it. Can't have a bald head, right? Read on. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. And you can't destroy the, uh, the corners of your beard. Now, there's one exception when you can bald your head. Go to uh, Leviticus Chapter six, numbers. numbers chapter six, Salakia, right? Because I see the sister looking at this brother's head like. I said, boss, she said, wait a minute. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, numbers. Right. Six. And. Cut. Right. Number six and 13. Right. Salakia. Number six and hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Nine. It should be what? First, start at uh one and two. Oh, five, That's what five, I wanted. Five. One. Start at one. Six Number and one. Number six and one. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Right. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow. Of a Nazarite. So this is a vow, right? There's a Nazarite vow according to the Heavenly Father. He's saying if you if you take this vow, right, which is to separate yourself and in basically making yourself presentable before the Lord, right, in a in a separate way, right? Read on. To separate themselves unto the Lord. Right. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. So it's a it's it's a it's there's certain things that a Nazarite has to do to separate himself, and he takes this vow to do it, right? Jump down to verse 9. Uh, verse five, five. 
Five. Verse 5. Okay. All the days of the vow of his separation shall no razor come upon his head. Right. Until the days be fulfilled. Until the days be fulfilled. So uh, a Nazarite, right, he does not, he doesn't cut his hair until he's done with the vow. So if a, if a brother vows, you know, I'm going to take this Nazarite vow for six months, right, he won't shave his head or cut his hair at all until that six month is complete, right? So it says until then, that's when the razor will come upon his head to shave his head. So the only time you can shave your head, right, is if you're keeping this commandment, which is Numbers chapter six on down of a Nazarite vow, right? So that's why you would see some brothers that have uh, low heads. This brother right here, his head's not shaven though. It's like, it's stubble, right? He doesn't have, he didn't take a razor to his head. No razor was put upon his head, right? He just got it cut low, right? So you can cut your hair low, you know, I don't think you got that problem, but nevertheless, right, you can't bald your head with a razor how, how, how uh, you know, Tyrese and them do, or, you know what I'm saying, cut your, uh, you can't shave off your beards neither, right? Because the word mar means to destroy it. So whatever you can grow on your face, you know what I'm saying, you got to let it grow. You can, you know, trim the edges or what have you, you know what I'm saying, line it up, but you can't destroy the beard. You understand that, brother? Right, so that's another commandment of the Lord, right? Give me Leviticus 19 and uh, 17. Leviticus 19 and 17. Read up. You give me Leviticus 19 and 17. So, like, can I keep reading on that? Yeah. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Right. Nor print any marks upon you. So you can't get any tattoos, brother, right? If you have tattoos, you have to repent of these things now that you've come into the knowledge of what it is that you can and cannot do according to the Lord. Right? So, did, so no more tattoos, right? Brothers up here have tattoos. Brothers repentant, not gonna get them any get, not not gonna get them anymore. That's right. Right? These are the things that the Lord commanded unto the Israelites. You understand that, sister? No tattoos, right? Give me uh 17. All right, 17. Leviticus 19 and 17. Give me Leviticus 19 and 11. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So you can't hate your brother in your heart, brother. That's a commandment. You have to forgive your people. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And rebuke means to correct him, right? So you have to correct your neighbor. And that's what we're out here doing right now. We're correcting our neighbors, letting them know what it is they should and should not be doing according to the Lord. Read on. And not suffer sin upon him. We're not going to suffer sin upon our brethren. And the first thing, the first step to doing that is what? Correcting yourself. First, you have to be, you have to rebuke yourself. That way you're able to rebuke others. Read on. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So no taking revenge against your brother and no having a grudge against him, right? These are commandments of the Lord because why? Hey, the Lord literally gave us commandments, right? To keep our nation in check, right? A lot of, a lot of things uh, of this world, right? Are, are um, they're destroyed upon these simple commandments, right? When you look at the Black Panther Party, this fall of destruction was what? Hey, hating that brother in our heart. Things of that nature, right? If if these things were going with the commandments of the Lord, these things wouldn't wouldn't uh basically fall, right? But because we continue to transgress the laws of the Lord, we we can never uh we can never keep it, right? Go ahead, bring it up. Acts five and thirty nine. Right. But if it be of God, you right? cannot overthrow it. So when we do things through the heavenly Father, it cannot be overthrown. All of our coming together and trying to bring us out of this captivity and things of that nature continuously become overthrown because we're not keeping his commandment, right? But once we establish these things in righteousness, which is what this is, right? The heavenly father, right? Give me Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24, right? Because what was Christ doing, right? Christ was sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as I was about to say, right? So what was he doing? He was building up the nation, right? Once we all come back into these laws, statutes, and commandments, we're not going to transgress the laws of the Lord. We're not going to steal from our brother. We're not going to hate our brother. We're not going to kill our brother over no Jordans. Hey, you see, you'll see what? The so-called blacks uh, uh, coming together as a nation again, right? But we have to get on the same page, and that same page is with who? The Lord, right? The book of Matthew. Bring it out. book of Matthew. Chapter 15 and verse 24. Right. But he answered and said, Right. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What the Lord say? I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the heavenly father said he sent to the lost sheep. Why? Because he's gathering these sheep together. They are lost. They're scattered. Right. He's going to bring them back into the fold. That's what we out here to do. We out here to gather them to the, uh, to the heavenly father. Right. So can you keep these commandments, brother? 
learning a lot, man. I got to work on it. Yeah. Give me uh, give me, give me, First John chapter two and verse number three, right? And that brother got a flyer for you to remember these commandments that we're bringing oh, yeah, out. That would be great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's right here. The Sabbath day, strangers before you, so they'll see food, right? And you can't destroy your beer. Right? Just stay giving right there, now you crumbled up ass. Look at the first John, chapter 2 and verse 3. Right? And hereby, we do know that we know him. And this is talking about Christ, who the world calls Jesus, right? But we know him as Yahweh Shai in his ancient paleo name, right? Read on. If we keep his commandments. If we what? If, if we, we keep, keep his, his commandments. So we know the Heavenly Father by keeping his commandments. Right? Read on. He that saith, I know him. Right. And keepeth not his commandments. And do what? And keepeth not his commandments. So those who say they know the Heavenly Father and they don't keep the commandments, the Bible says what? Read. Is a liar. Is a what? Is a liar. It says they're a liar. So in order to not be found a liar, brother, we got to keep these law statutes and commandments. Right? Read on. And Give me Leviticus 5 and 5. And the truth is not in you, right? And we're bringing out the words of truth, right? Give me Leviticus 5 and 5. Leviticus 5 and 5. Right? And it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things. Right? And this is talking about the law, right? And every brother up here has been guilty in, in one of these things, right? Read on. That he shall confess that he hath sinned in that thing. What do we have to, what does the brother have to do? He shall confess that he hath sinned in that thing. So you got to confess unto the heavenly father that you've sinned unto that thing. Why? Because give me Proverbs chapter 28 and verse number uh, 13, right? Give me Proverbs 28 and 13, and give me Proverbs 28 and 9 as well. The book of Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13, right? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, right? But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them. And do what? And forsaketh them. So he confesseth and forsaketh them, meaning what? You stop doing these things. You have to repent to the Heavenly Father by confessing your sins to him. Father, I was shaving my beard, right? I want repentance for that. And you have to forsake it. You can't shave it anymore, right? Read on. Shall have mercy. What is Christ? Shall have mercy. What, is, what did Christ die for? Shall have mercy. That's when the blood of Christ comes into effect. Hey, you got that grace period to get right. Now you're getting right, right? But Christ isn't giving you grace and mercy if you're not getting right. You see what I'm saying? You keep spending the rent money, right? That grace is going to run out, right? And then once it's time to pay, hey, you kicked out that house. Right, so we gotta get right before Christ comes back, cause it says He's coming back like a thief in the night. Right, bring that out. First John one and nine. Wait, bring that, bring this out. Proverbs twenty eight and nine. Proverbs twenty eight and nine. Right. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. From hearing what? From hearing the law. What are we giving this brother? From hearing the law. So we're showing you the law. Give me Leviticus nineteen and eleven. I didn't show him that one, right? It says, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, read on. Even his prayer shall be abomination. His what? Even his prayer shall be abomination. So the heavenly father saying your prayer is something hateful to him if you're not keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. Right? If you're not obedient to your father, why does he want to hear you ask him for anything? Right? You telling your kids, hey, pick up the house, get good grades, do the dishes. And they saying to hell with that. But I want the new J's. Right? You're going to be pissed the hell off. Right? Hey, I know for a fact, hey, when I wasn't doing the things that my mom uh, wanted me to do, right, it would, it's, hey, it's worse for you to go and then ask for something, right? I want, then I'll go and ask to go outside, right? She may not say nothing even though I'm not doing these things, but then when I ask for something, that'll just piss her off even more. Like, what the hell? How are you going to ask me to do something and you ain't did what I asked you to do, right? It's the same way with the Heavenly Father. He said, he that turneth away his ear from the law, right, which is being disobedient, Right, his prayers are an abomination, and the heavenly Father literally hates abominations. Right, so he's saying the prayer that you're sending up, he hates that thing because you're not obedient to me. But here you are asking me for something. Right, so we have to keep the law. Right, bring it out. What's your what's your precept? First John one and nine. Right, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Right, so you got to confess them. Read on. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right, so we, to get cleansing from unrighteousness, we have to forsake these things. Right, give me Ephesians chapter uh, 4 and verse 26. Five. Salak, 5 and 26. Yeah, give me Leviticus 19 and 11. You get Ephesians. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 11. This is another commandment, brother. He shall not steal, neither deal falsely, 
neither lie one to another. Right, so if you're dealing with any Israelite, which is so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, right, you cannot steal from them, brother. You cannot deal falsely with them, meaning you can't trick them or deceive them or anything like that, and you can't lie to them, right? All of your people you have to be truthful with in the sight of the Heavenly Father. Why? Because what? Hey, anything that you do unto your brother, you're doing unto Christ, right? right? Because you have to see Christ in all of your brethren, right. right? Once you see Christ in the men that look like us, right? Once you see Christ in them, there's no way that you could lie to them if you truly love Christ. There's no way that you could steal to them if you truly love Christ. There's no way that you could deal falsely with them and trick them if you truly love Christ because you'll see the Christ in them, right? Bring that out. Ephesians chapter 5 and 26. Ephesians 5 and 26. Right. That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So, brother, now that you've heard these things, you have to cleanse yourself with the word. Right. It says the washing of water by the word. Give me 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. 22. Right. 1 Peter 1 and 22. It says cleanse yourself with the washing of water by the word, brother. Right. So you got to wash yourself and make yourself clean with these with the heavenly father's words now that you have a, a, at least a, a beginning of a guide right of things that you should and shouldn't be doing and then you have to go into this word and continue to get that water to That's continue right. to cleanse yourself and to clean to continue to examine yourself and grow right we're likened unto trees and we have to produce fruit for the heavenly father the only way a tree can grow is with water That's right so you got to start reading this word brother and receiving this water so that you can grow into a tree of righteousness where the Heavenly Father checks your fruits and he's pleased with them, right? You don't want to bear bad fruit, right? Because then the Heavenly Father is going to do what with that tree? He's going to chop it down, right? He's going to cut that tree out. Man, this tree ain't giving me no fruit. It's a wrap, right? We want to be trees that are producing fruit for the Heavenly Father so he can continue to give us that water and continue to allow us to grow, right? Bring that out. I know Psalm you got precept. 119 and 9. Where with all shall a young man cleanse yeah, his way? 22. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Right, so cleansing your way is taking heed to this word, brother. Right, bring this out. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 1 and verse 22. Right, give me Psalms, stay in 119. Give me uh 151 and uh 142. Bring it out. Sing, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. In obeying the truth. So what we're telling you to do, brother, is purify yourself, right? Purify your soul, right? In obeying the truth. What is the truth? Right, bring that out. Psalms 119 and 142. Right. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Right. And thy law is the truth. So the law is the truth, brother. Give me uh, verse 151. 151. Right. Thou art near, O Lord. Right. And all thy commandments are true. And the commandments are true. The law, statutes, right. and commandments, brother, uh, is the truth that you have to obey. Right, read that again. Sing. Yeah, purify your soul. Remember we said wash yourself with that water, which is the word? You got to purify your soul with that water, which is the word, right? So purifying your soul, read on. In obeying the truth. In obeying what? In obeying the truth. And what is the truth, brother? It's the law, statutes, and commandments, right? Read on. Through the spirit of unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Right? And loving your brother is also a part of that, right? Because what? 1 John 5 and 2. Give me 1 John 5 and 2, right? It's talking about loving your brother. Hold it. Hold it, hold it. I know what it says. First say. John, five and two. Right. By this we know that we love the children of God. Right. When we love God and keep his commandments. So you loving your brother is keeping the commandments. If you love your brother, you're not going to steal from him, right? If you love your brother, you're not going to try and take his wife from him and commit adultery with it. Right? right. But the problem is our nation doesn't love their brothers right now. That's why we rap about what? I'm going to take his woman. Right. That's why we rap about what? I just robbed him, right? That's why we rap about what? Hey, I'm going to kill him, right? Because we don't love our brother. But if we keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, hey, we're going to love our people, right? Loving your neighbor is not stealing from him. Loving your neighbor is not lying to him, right? Read on. Being born again. Being what? Being, Being born, born again. again. So now you got to be born again, brother, because these scriptures should be doing what? They should be cutting you up to where you damn bleeding out. They cutting you up. Damn, I was doing this. Damn, I was doing that. I was living this way. Right? These scriptures are supposed to be cutting you up. Read on. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. Not of the corruptible seed. Because right now, right, uh, uh, before you came into this truth, right, you were born of corruptible seed. Like every one of us were. Right? We were into, this, into the world born of a corruptible seed. Read on. But of incorruptible. Now we're coming into this incorruptible seed, being born again, which is the seed of Christ. Read on. 
By the word of God. By the what? By the word of God. And who is the word of God? Right, that's Christ. Right, that's John chapter one and verse number uh, 14. Right, he's the word made flesh. You understand? So what, when we wanna follow Christ, what are we doing? We gotta keep these laws, statutes, and commandments and follow this word. You understand? Give me John chapter six and verse number 63, right? We're gonna read the words of Christ. John six and 63. Right? What color are these letters? Red. Who's speaking? Christ. Right? It is the spirit that quicken it. So it's the spirit that make you alive, brother, right? So the only way you can be alive is through your spirit, right? This, this flesh profit us nothing. Read on. It is the spirit that quicken it. The flesh profit of nothing. So this body that we inhabit, it don't profit us nothing, man, right? We don't, we, we're focused on the spiritual aspect because your spirit is the only thing that can give you eternal life. Read on. The words that I speak unto you. What did Christ say? The words that I speak unto you. What did Yahweh Shah say? The words that I speak unto you. Yahweh Shah said these words that I speak unto you. Read on. They are spirit. They are what? They, they are spirit. And the spirit does what? It makes you alive. Read on. And they are life. And they are life, brother. So what you're getting when you read these words, when you keep these words and you follow these words, Right, we're bringing life unto them, right? What you what you holding? Bring read on, read on. Being born again, right? Not of corruptible seed, right? But of incorruptible, by the word of God, right? Which liveth and abideth forever, right? For all flesh is as grass, right? And all the glory of man as a flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. So all of these things in this earth, man, they're going to die and fall away. But what? We giving you the word because it told you that you would have life in that, right? Read on. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. How long? Forever. Right? So these words are going to endure forever, man. That's why we, that's why they got the damn, they, they, the, the Bible has been preserved for so long. Because these are the words of life. Right. Right? Read on. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Right, and we're preaching that gospel unto you, brother. Right, give me the book of Luke chapter 1 and 68. Luke 1 and 68. Right, because oh. we say that Jesus is our, what, Lord and Savior, right? That's what they say. But what is Christ saving us from? Do you know, brother? Right, let's read what Christ is saving us from. Bring that out. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Of who? Of, of Israel. Israel. Right, read on. For he has visited and redeemed his people. So the Lord is the only one who's going to redeem his people. You understand? The only way we're going to get out of this captivity is by the hand of Christ, right? Christ is going to lead us out of this captivity. Read on. And hath raised up a horn of salvation. A horn of salvation. We receive salvation through Christ, right? Read on. For us in the house of his servant David. And Christ was born through the, through the uh, lineage of David. Read on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Right. Which have been since the world began. Uh-huh. That we should be saved from our enemies. What is Christ saving us from? From, from our, our enemies. enemies. Right, read on. And from the hand of all that hate us. So Christ is saving us from the hand of our enemies and, and all, the, all of those that hate us. Right, so we have to understand that what? You wanna be saved in that day, right? Right, give me the book of Zechariah chapter 13 and verse eight, right? Give me Zechariah 13 and eight. Give me Isaiah chapter 14. Give me Revelation chapter 13 and verse nine. Zechariah 13 and 8. Right. And it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord. Saith who? Saith the Lord. Right, read on. Two parts therein shall be cut off. So two parts of the Heavenly Father's people are going to be cut off. Right, read on. And die. And do what? And die. And die. Right, read on. But the third shall be left therein. So the Heavenly Father is going to recover a remnant of his people. Because you got to think. Right? The Heavenly Father is waiting on one third of his people to come to these law, statutes, and commandments. Right? A lot of our people that are so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are not going to wear their fringes. They're going to continue to eat pork. They're going to continue to damn go to the club on Friday night and things of that nature. Two-thirds of our people are going to continue to do that. But one-third of the Lord's people are going to come into these law, statutes, and commandments. One-third of, of the Lord's people, the so-called Blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, are going to wear their fringes and are going to keep the Sabbath days holy and are going to uh, keep the commandments. They're not going to shave their beards off. One third of them will, right? But it said what? Those that weren't going to do it, what's going to happen to them, brother? Read it again. And it shall. Right. What, what he's saying is, what he was saying earlier, right? 
what the Bible was saying earlier is that because they transgressed, right, that he was that he wasn't going to destroy us off the planet of the earth. You understand that? So the Israelites are still here today. Right. The Lord could have destroyed us. You know what I'm saying? Y'all transgressing my laws. You know what? I'll wipe them out. Well, yeah, we're punished right now. And it says that the Lord chastened who he loved Right. So he's, he's giving us a spiritual whooping. Nevertheless, he's not. He didn't. He didn't destroy us as far as taking us off the face of the earth. Right. So read. Go back to Zechariah 13 and 8. Read it again. Zechariah 13 and 8. Right. And it shall come to pass. And this is talking about a prophecy. Right. Because what he's reading is talking about right now. We haven't been cut off the earth. We haven't been. Uh, we haven't been taken out. Right. But in this prophecy, which is when Christ comes back. Right. It says what? And it shall come to pass that in the land, saith the Lord, uh -huh. two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But two thirds will die when Christ comes back. That's why I said in Isaiah, the slain of the Lord shall be many. Right? Because what? When Christ came back, you abused that grace. He gave you a time period to get right. He gave you a time period to do it. Hey, Christ literally died on the cross and rose again so that you could come back to these lost edges of commandments. And you had this whole time period to do so. And when he came back, you did it, right? So what's going to happen? Hey, he has to require that of you, right? You got to get kicked out the house, as we was talking about the grace period, right? You had that time to get right, but you didn't, right? So it's talking about those who who had the time to get right. Give me Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30, right? Read. And a third shall be left therein. But a third of his people are going to do it, right? And you see, Lord willing, these brothers up here today, right? Read on. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And this is what's going to happen to those who are keeping these commandments, right? And who are truly believing in Christ, who truly have that faith in them, right? Read. And will refine them as silver is refined. Right. And will try them as gold is tried. Right. And they shall call on my name. Uh-huh. And I will hear them. Right. I will say, it is my people. Right. And they shall say. The Lord is my God. And that's going to happen, brother. So you want to be numbered in the one third and not the two thirds that's going to die in that day. Right. You want to be caught. You want to you want to say the heavenly father is my God and the heavenly father say he's my people. Right. So that means that you have to do what? Keep these law statutes and commandments. Right. And and, and come into the faith in Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus. Right. Bring that out. The what book of Baruch. Chapter 2 and verse 30. Right. Read that out. For I knew that they would not hear What me. the Lord say? For I knew that they would not hear me. So the Lord knows two-thirds of his people are not going to hear him. Read on. Because it is a stiff-necked people. Because it is what? It is a stiff-necked people. What are our people? It is a stiff-necked people. Our people are stiff-necked. You tell them they can't go to the club on Friday, they say, man, shit, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to still come to the club at 10. Right? I'm going to get there early so I can get in for free. Right? I'm going to get that $100 bottle of Henny. Right? That's what they say, man. They stiff neck. And the Lord said, man, I know it. Give me Jeremiah 4 and 22. Right? Read. But in the land of their captivity. In the what? In the land of their captivity. In the land of our captivity. It's talking about the one third. What's going to happen? They shall remember themselves. They shall what? They, they shall remember themselves. themselves. And you're remembering yourself right now, brother. Read on. And shall know that I am the Lord their God. Right. For I will give them in heart and ears to hear. So the Lord is going to give that one third a heart and ears to hear. Right? Read on. Salaki. And return from it. Salaki. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. And it says, and they're going to praise the Heavenly Father in the land of their captivity. Give me the book of Psalms chapter 111 and verse 10. Let's see how they're going to praise the Heavenly Father in the land of their captivity. Right? Psalms 111 and 10. Right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right? A good understanding have all day that do his commandments. Read on. His praise endureth forever. So you praise the heavenly father by fearing him and keeping his commandments. That's right. Right? Read on. Right. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. So in the land of your captivity, you have to fear the heavenly father, right? And keep his commandments. Read on. And think upon my name. And do what? And, and think, think upon, upon my name. name. Right? Read on. And return from their stiff neck. And from their wicked deeds. And from their what? From their wicked deeds. What's transgressing the Sabbath day? From their from wicked, wicked deeds. Right? We got to turn from these wicked deeds that we were doing. The Lord looks at eating pork as wicked. Mm -hmm. Although we may say, man, I didn't shoot nobody. Right. Man, I didn't stab nobody. Man, I didn't rob that man. All I'm doing is eating some bacon. The Heavenly Father looks at that as evil. He looks at that as wicked. 
Because he told you not to do it. Right. Right, read on. For they shall remember the way of their father. Right. Which sin before the Lord. Right. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers. Right. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Right. Give me Isaiah chapter 14. Let's see what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. Because once you do this, right, the Lord is going to bring us back into this land. Read on. And they shall be lords of it. Right. And I will increase them and they shall not be diminished. Right. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God. Right. And they shall be my people. Uh-huh. And I will no more drive my people Israel out of the land that I have given them. You see that? So the, the, it's not. this is going to be eternal kingdom, right? Because the kingdom of heaven is going to be right here on earth. Right? Bring that out. Isaiah 14 and 1. Right. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Right. And will yet choose Israel. Right. And Jacob and Israel is the same person. Right? right. Read on. And set them in their own land. In their what? In their yeah. own land. It's talking about this right here. That one third is going to be set in their own land. Read on. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And that's talking about these other nations. Right? These other people, the so-called white man, Chinese man, Arab man. Right? These other people, they're going to be joined with them. Read on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And they got their own place, right? We're going to put them in their place. What's their place? What are and, they doing? And the house of Israel shall possess them. Shall what? Shall possess them. What do you do with a possession? You own it, right? Read on. Shall possess them in the land of the Lord for service. Right. And handmaid. Doesn't that sound like heaven? You got servants and handmaids waiting on you hand and foot, right? Hey, today we kind of do what? Hey, you got to pay them. You got to pay the Chinese lady down there $100 to get your wife's, you know, nails and toes done, right? But in the kingdom of heaven, right, that Chinese lady's going to be working for you as a servant and a handmaid. She kind of get pink nails today. The next day, take it all off and give me green nails. The next day, take it all off and give me orange nails, right? Hey, we're going to have servants and handmaids, man. Read on. Huh? And they shall take them captives. Right. Whose captives they were. What did the Lord say? Whose captives they were. And that's only righteous. Right. The Heavenly Father is a, is a righteous man. You know. So if we went into slavery, if we had this happen to us, if all of this shit happened to us, it's only right that we what? We flip the script. Right. That's only right. People kind of say that and say, oh, man, you guys are preaching hate. But wait a minute. Well, where was we was preaching hate? When they was doing this to us, why didn't why didn't tell the so-called white man that was whipping our backs that that's hate, right? They didn't tell us that. When George Floyd had his damn uh had a knee upon his neck, were they saying that's hate? No, right? Read on. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Over their what? Over, over their, their oppressors. oppressors. And who's our oppressors today? Mm. Come on, it said that Christ will do what? Save us from the hand of our enemies and all that hate us, mm. right? Every nation on this earth hates the so-called black man. That's just, that's just a fact, right? So what? Hey, Christ is coming back to redeem him. Because you know that Christ is a black man, right? Right? So, hey, it's only right that he comes back and gets revenge for his people. Right? He kind of turned this thing up and down, right? Bring that out. The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 9. Right? If any man have an ear, right? let him hear. Now, brother, you got ears, right? So you got to hear this. Read. He that leadeth into captivity uh -huh. shall go into captivity. So the white man led us into captivity. He got to go into captivity. Yes, right. Read on. He that killeth with the sword. What did they do to George Floyd? He that yeah, killeth with the sword. sword. Trayvon Martin. He, he that killeth with the sword. sword. Right, Sandra Bland. He, he that killeth with the sword. And they kill our people every damn day, right? Read on. Must be killed with the sword. Hey, what's your, how was Shai going to do? Must, Must be killed, killed with, with the sword. sword. Right, read on. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is what we're patiently waiting on. This is the faith we have in Christ. Right? That, hey, man, this thing's going to get turned up upside down. Right? right? Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, right, and verse number 3. Deuteronomy 30 and 3. Right? Oh, that did the Lord want. Wait a lot. Start verse, at uh, 2. Verse 2. Right? And shall return unto the Lord thy God. So, brother, you have to return unto the Heavenly Father. Right? Read. Right. And shall obey his voice. And keep right. these commandments that we showed you, brother. And figure out the other commandments that you're not keeping. Read That's on. Right. According to all that I command thee this day. No, just ten. This all day. All that he commands us. Read on. Thou and thy children. So that means you and your whole household, right? So it's not only that you got to keep the commandments, 
right? But your wife got to keep the commandments. If you have children, they need to keep the commandments, That's right. right? Because they're what? They're a representation of you, That's right. right? When you joined unto your wife, y'all became one flesh. That's right. So if you're keeping the commandments and she's not, right, you're not keeping the commandments. So you have to establish and rule your household. That's you understand right. that, brother? Right? Read on. And shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Right. Thou and thy children. And this is talking about the one third. They're going to do this. This will happen. Right. The beginning of this says, and it shall come to pass. Meaning this is prophecy. Right. Read on. With all thine heart and with all thy soul. Right. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. So once that one third comes into these law, statutes, and commandments, and their household is, is, is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and that whole one third is doing that, the heavenly father is going to turn our captivity. That's I'm what, you, hey, brother. Christ, hey, they saying what? Hey, that what? We keep waiting on the Lord, right? We waiting on God, right? right? Hey, God waiting on us. Right. He waiting on us to come back to him, right? right? So we got to get ourselves right and come back to the heavenly father right. so that he can turn this captivity That's like right. he said he's going to do. Read on. And that, then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. That's when he's going to do it, once we return to him. Read on. And have compassion upon thee. Right. And will return and gather thee from all the nations. Right. Whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. And he scattered us in all of these different places. Right. Read on. And if any of thine be you can hold, You can drop that. Right. Give me Revelation 21 and 12. And I'm going to leave with, uh, yeah, go ahead. Give me 21 and 12. Revelation 21 and 12. Right, so this is John the Baptist. I'm sorry. John the Revelator having a revelation, which means revealing of what heaven looks like, right? And had a wall great and high. So heaven has a wall great and high on earth, right? This ain't some mystical thing, right? Give me John uh, chapter, uh, I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 1. Revelation 1 and 1. Right. The revelation of Jesus Christ, right, which God gave unto him to show his servant right. things which must shortly come to pass. Give me Revelation 21 and 1. Revelation 21 and 1. Bring it out. And I saw a new heaven. A what? A, a new, new heaven. heaven. Right. And a new earth. Right. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Right. And there was no more sea. Right. Read on. And I, John. So the holy city, New Jerusalem, right, coming down from God. Coming where? Coming down from God. Read on. Out of heaven. Out of heaven, right? So when you say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right, it's, it's, hey, the will of the heavenly father is going to come down to heaven, right? We were promised Jerusalem, right? You understand that? We were promised the land of Israel. So it's saying what? Hey, he sees Israel, right, that new Jerusalem, which is talking about the kingdom of heaven, coming down from God. Where? Read it again. And Read verse 2. Saw, saw the city, saw the holy city, right. New Jerusalem, coming down from God, right. out of heaven, uh -huh. prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Right, so a hey, heaven is coming to earth, brother. Read, read, read uh, verse oh, 12. Verse 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 12. Right. Oh, and had a wall. Great and high. So it's going to have a wall great and high right here on earth. Read on. And had 12 gates. Had how many? 12, 12 gates. I thought the kingdom of heaven had one gate. Mm. They've been lying to us. Right. right? We not dumb niggas no more. That's right. right. They say if you want to hide something, you put it in a book. Hey, we never opened up this book, so we've been just taking what they say face value. Right? They tell us Friday about a, a movie about a white man. Right? So every time you see Friday, you don't even want to watch it. But if you watch the movie, you be like, he don't know what he's talking about. That's what happened in these churches. We read this book and we realized they don't know what they're talking about, right? Read on. And at the gates, 12 angels. So it's 12 angels at these 12 gates to the kingdom of heaven. Read on. And names written thereon, right? which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So at each of these gates, this is the name of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So let me ask you a question. If you're not a children of Israel, can you get into that gate? So heaven's not for everybody, right? Why they been lying to us like that? This whole time they've been telling us you don't have to keep the commandments. Right. You have to love your enemy, which is the white man, right? That's what they tell you. You gotta love the white man, right? That's not in the Bible, man. Right? They tell us it's one gate to heaven. It's not in the Bible. They tell us everybody can get into heaven. When they told you that the these hey, the kingdom of heaven is for the Israelites, right? 
They tell you that what? Christ died for everybody. That's not true, right? All these things that they that they telling us in this in this book, it's not actually in the book, right? Cuz they're expecting us to just take it at face value. Pastor said, right? When you go to church, pastor might bring out five five verses. You didn't hear more verses here than probably all your time in the Christian church. Right? right? You just spent hours in the Christian church. You only been here maybe an hour and a half. You know what I'm saying? And you'd have heard way more verses out the Bible. So who, what does that tell you? Give me uh, give me the book, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Give me 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11, right? The book of Isaiah 8 and 20. Right. To the law and to the testimony. And that's what we're reading. The Bible is the law and the testimony. Read on. If they speak not according to this word. Right. It is because there is no light in them. So it's no light in these pastors. Give me Isaiah chapter 30, right? It's no light in these pastors. They've been lying to us this whole time. They're not truly. Hey, they've been, I don't know if you just saw, but it was a damn pastor that got robbed in New York, man. Because he was flexing, talking about, man, drive what you want to drive. Flips the camera and he in a Rolls Royce, right? Flips the camera back. Damn, all these chains and things of that nature. Gucci, whole, old outfit Gucci, right? And the people of his congregation, them can't even pay their damn light bill. Catch the bus. Right, you gotta catch the bus to get to them to, to, to church, man. Right? Right, he said, drive what you wanna drive. That's crazy. <laughs> right? These pastors are literally jokes, man. Right? Give me Isaiah 30 and verse uh number nine. Isaiah 30 and 9. Bring it up. Right? That this is a rebellious people. Start at start at eight. Verse eight. Right? Now go. Write it before them in a table. Right. And note it in a book. Right. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Right. That this is a rebellious people. Well, these people on this sign are rebellious. So-called black man's rebellious. So-called Haitian man. The so-called West Indian man. The so-called Puerto Rican man. So-called Mexican man. Hey, rebellious, man. Dominican. Right. Hey, rebellious. Read on. Brother, stay trying to pull the precept. Relax. That this is a rebellious people. Lying children. Hey, what? Lying, Lying children. And it told you what? That if you say you know the Heavenly Father, you're not keeping His commandments, you're a liar. And what do the, hey, what, are, what does the whole church do? They'll have a damn crawfish boil, which we know in the law you're not supposed to eat, right? A church will have a crawfish boil professing that they know God, right? But the Heavenly Father said, this is a lying children, man. They're literally lying. They saying they know the Lord and having a damn crawfish boil, right? That's a rebellious children, a lying people. Read on. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That will what? That will not hear the law of the Lord. Read on. Which say to the seers, see not. So they saying to these people that see things, see not. Don't see nothing. Right? Read on. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. They don't want the prophets to prophesy unto them right things. They don't want you to tell you, brother, you got to grow that beard out. They don't want it. They don't want. The, these children don't want uh, the prophets to tell them, brother, you got to wear fringes. Right? Read on. Speak unto us smoothly. What do they want him to do? Speak unto us smoothly. That's why the so-called white man has literally put a dollar ticket on your pastors. Because the so-called black man, woman, and child want to hear smooth things. All you got to do is believe in the Lord and you'll get a Benz, right? We want to hear smooth things. We want to hear, hey, you can be wicked. You can shave your beard. You don't have to do that anymore. We want to hear smooth things, right? They don't want to. They don't want to hear accountability and correction, right? In obedience, these are things that the Christian church does not teach. They don't teach you to keep the laws of God. They tell you they're done away with. You can do whatever you want now, right? All you have to do is have faith in Christ and put your put your ties in the in the, in the, in the uh, basket, right? Seven times that they pass it around, right? Read on. Get. That speaking to us smooth things. Right, that's what we want to hear, right? Prophesy deceits. What is the uh, Christian church? Prophesy deceits. Right, read on. Get you out of the way. Right. Turn aside out of the path. And this is what the pastors are doing. They're saying, get out the way, turn out of that path, man. Right, we don't want you to get the kingdom of heaven. Get off that path, man. Turn away. Who are you turning away from? Who do they want you to turn from? Read. Cause the Holy One of Israel right? to cease from before us. Right? They're causing the Heavenly Father, which is the Holy One of Israel, to cease from before us. Right? They're causing us to go astray and off the path. Right? But uh, jump down to verse 30. Verse 30. Right? And the Lord... Wait, no, that's not what I want. Uh, where is it at? 17, I think. 
Oh, word, verse 21. Read verse 21. Slock it. Right? In thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying. Wait, so start at 20. Slock it, right? 20. Right? So the Lord had literally had these pastors set up, though. You know what I'm saying? To have us go astray. But what? Hey, the Lord said what? Read verse 20. Verse 20. Right? For though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. Right? In the water of affliction. So even though we in these slums and these ghettos, even though we're going through all of this hell, even though Trayvon Martin and George Floyd and Sandra Bland is happening to us, read on. Yet shall not thy teachers be moved into a corner anymore. Right, so the Lord is saying, guess what? I know you had these damn pastors prophesying unto you smooth things. I know you had these people teaching you that you were black and African American. But he said, guess what? Hey, your, your, your teachers are not going to be removed into a corner anymore. They're not going to be put over there anymore, right? What's going to happen? Yet shall not thy teachers be moved into a corner anymore. Right? But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. And that's what's going to happen, brother. Right now you're seeing your teachers, right? And, and the nation of Israel, Lord willing, you can become a teacher and they'll see you. And you can teach the, 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 the true doctrine of the Bible unto your people and give them life. Right? He said, because what? Hey, thy, thy eyes will see thy teachers. Right? You're going to see... You're going to see people giving the true words of the Bible again. Read on. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying. What? This is the way. What is the, what is the Lord telling this, brother? This, this is, is the way. way. Right? I don't know if that's happening unto you, brother, right? But the one-third, they're going to hear something in their head saying, man, this makes sense. Man, damn, I, this, this is exactly what I need to do. I, mean, I need to keep these law, statutes, and commandments. Man, I need to be obedient to the Heavenly Father. Right? Read on. This is the way. Uh-huh. Walk ye in it. Do what? Walk ye in it. Right. Walk ye in it. Read on. When ye turn to the right hand. Right. And when ye turn to the left. Right. So what So what you have to do, brother, is walk in these law, statutes, and commandments, right, if the Heavenly Father's putting it upon your spirit to do so. Right. You have to get into the uh, rehearsing these righteous acts. Give me the book of Judges chapter 5 and verse 11. Give me the book of... Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, I think. I think that's what I want. No, I don't know why. No, that's not what I want. I want um, instruction, reproof uh, for, for righteousness. 1 Timothy 3 and 16, that's what I want. Bring that up. Judges 5 and 11. Judges 5 and 11. Right? They that are delivered... From the noise of archers. And this is talking about those who are being delivered from, it's saying the noise of archers, right? But in today, that would be like bullets passing from our ears, right? You hear bullets. Read on. In the places of drawing water. Right. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts. There shall they what? Rehearse the righteous acts. Right. What are we out here doing? Rehearse the righteous acts. So you have to rehearse these righteous acts, brother, by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Keeping the feast days. Keeping the Sabbath day. Right. Read on. Rehearse the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of the villages in Israel. Right? Bring then that out. Shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. The That's enough of, on that. Bring that out. The book of 2 Timothy, right? chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Right? And is profitable for doctrine. For what? For doctrine. Read on. For reproof. For what? For reproof. So we got to use these things to reprove ourselves, right? Give me Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. What's that? Proverbs 6 and 23, right? For Read on. For correction. For what? For correction. Read on. For instruction uh -huh. in righteousness. For what? In righteousness. Instruction in righteousness, brother. Right? That's what these scriptures are for. Right? So do you know how to repent to the Heavenly Father? All praise to the Most High. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you instructions from these scriptures of how to repent. Right? So... Give me Proverbs 28 and 13 again. Give me Leviticus 5 and 5. Let's touch back on those things again. One more time. You might think I'm right? here because I come here every Saturday or because the I book of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 13. But, uh, right? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. So when you're coming into repentance, brother, you cannot cover your sins. The Lord said he's not going to prosper. Read on. But whoso confesses and forsaketh them right? shall have mercy. So you have to confess and forsake your sins to re truly repent to the Heavenly Father. And that's how you'll give mercy. Right? Christ came to bring us repentance, which is that mercy. Right? Bring that out. 
Leviticus 5 and 5. Right. And it shall be. When he shall be guilty in one of these things. And you were guilty in these things, right? Read on. That he shall confess that he have sinned in that thing. Right, so now you have to confess that you have sinned to the Heavenly Father. Right, so give me the book of uh, first, uh, damn, first Chronicles chapter 8 and 33. Right, give me Daniel 7 and, uh, 7 and 10. I'm off my pivot today, boy. First Chronicles 8 and 33. Bring it up. No, 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 no. Let me see. Nah, that's not that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, first king. Yeah, con 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 slot here. I'm off my pivot today, man. Daniel six and ten. Yeah. The book of Daniel, chapter six and verse ten. Right? Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed. Right. He went into his house. He went where? He went into his house. So Daniel, right, read on. And his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. Toward where? Toward Jerusalem. Right. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. He kneeled upon his knees. So first he was. Yeah, that's easy. That's light. That's light. Right. So it says. So, but check this out, right? You got to have one when you wake up, right? When you get home, right? When you go to bed. Right? That's that's just the basic three. Right? When you get up, before you go to work, pray to the Heavenly Father. Get off work, pray to the Heavenly Father, right? Or or right? You can pray to the Heavenly Father on your three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's that's three right there. You know what I'm saying? that's all the same category as praying for you. Right. Uh, and the precept to tell you morning, evening, and night, basically. Right, 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 right. That's Psalm 51 and uh, 17. Morning, evening, and night, right? So your morning would be when you get up, right? Your evening would be when you about when you get off work, and then night would be right before you go to sleep, right? So uh, give me a uh, slot. Read it again. The book of Daniel, chapter 6 and verse 10. Uh huh. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, right, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. Toward Jerusalem. So his his hands. I mean, his uh, he was toward he was toward Jerusalem, right? Which is what the east. So you gotta face the east when you pray, right? Read on. He kneeled upon his knees and kneel upon your knees before the heavenly Father, right? So you gotta be facing the east, kneeling upon your knees, right? Read on. Three. Facing the east towards Jerusalem, right? That's your holy land, right? Give me Galatians chapter four. In verse uh, 26. Three times a day. Right. And prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. Right. So you got to be spread towards Jerusalem. And this is why. Galatians 4 and 26. Galatians. Yeah, that's Satan. Give me Mark chapter 4 and verse 15. Galatians 4 and 26. Right. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, right. which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is the mother of us all. That's where we come from, right? So you got to face your land, which is the holy land, right, which is towards the east. Bring that out real quick. The book of Mark, chapter 4 and verse 14. The sower soweth the word. Right. So we saw in the word unto y'all. Read on. And these are they by the wayside right. where the word is sown. Uh-huh. But when they have heard... Satan cometh immediately. Right, so Satan's going to come as soon as this word is being sown in y'all's heart. Read on. And take it away, the, the word that was sown in their heart. And Lord willing, you know what I'm saying, we don't allow this to the, to distract us, right? So uh, let's get back on the pivot. 1 Kings 8 and 54. First Kings 8 and 54. Right. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying. And this is Solomon, which was the wisest man on the earth, right? Let's see how he prayed. All this prayer and supplication unto the Lord. Right. He arose from before the altar of uh, the Lord. Right. From kneeling on his knees. Kneeling on his knees. With his hands spread up to heaven. Right. So the wisest man didn't pray like this. The wisest man on the earth prayed like this. Right. Kneeling on his knees, facing towards the east, with his hands spread up towards heaven. Right. So when you when you uh, give your prayer of repentance. We have to use these scriptures which are given for what? Instruction in righteousness, as it said in 1 Timothy 3 and 6, 2 Timothy 3 and 16. That we use these scriptures 
for instruction in righteousness, right? So we using these scriptures to figure out what are the instructions that I should do. Okay, Solomon was praying this way. That's my instruction in righteousness, right? So hands spread towards heaven. Kneeling on your knees, facing the east. Give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. Right. But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is Christ. is given a divine order, right? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man, right? So it goes Christ, the man, the woman. Read on. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. These are all the people that we're following. You understand? So what? Hey, the woman does what her husband tells her to do. The husband does what Christ tells her, tells him to do, and Christ does what the Heavenly Father tells him to do, right? Read on. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Right, so you're a man if you have your head covered while you're praying or prophesying, read on. Dishonoreth his head. You're dishonoring Christ because Christ is your head. And ultimately what? If you're dishonoring Christ, you're dishonoring his Father. Read on. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. So when, a, when your woman prays, right, if y'all say a prayer together or she says a prayer by herself, uh, if her head's uncovered, read on. Dishonoreth her head. She's dishonoring you, which is ultimately dishonoring Christ, which is ultimately dishonoring Heavenly Father, right? So when you pray and you have your prayers, no do-rag on your head, no, no, uh, no hat, no beanie, right? Your head has to be uncovered. And when she prays, her head needs to be fully covered, right? With a bonnet, you can put a sheet, towel, whatever you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? But her head should just be covered because if she doesn't cover her head, she's dishonoring it, right? That makes sense? Read it again. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, right? Dishonoreth her head, right? For that is even all one as if she were shaven, right? So, so. Make sure her head's covered. Make sure your head's uncovered. You remove anything on your head, right? If your head's covered and her head's uncovered, both of y'all would be dishonoring Christ and the Heavenly Father, right? So that's how you pray. You want to remove anything on your head, make sure her head's covered, right? Kneel on your knees, facing the east, with your hands spread up towards heaven to say a prayer of repentance. Yeah, no, no, no. I've seen that before, but it was yeah, well, you know why that is? Because the Muslims, right, what Prophet Muhammad did was he took the doctrine of what the Israelites were doing, right, and tried to create his own religion, right? It tells you that in the book of uh, Babylon to Timbuktu, right? Prophet Muhammad literally saw the Israelites, even if you go into the Quran and things of that nature, it tells you to refer to the Torah and things of that, you know what I'm saying? He basically, because Quran means to recite, so they're basically reciting, trying to, make their own religion out of the Bible. It's a watered down Israelite. That's what it is. It's, the, it's a great value brand Israelite, right? That's what they do. But nevertheless, right, the Lord's not dealing with Muslims. The Lord's not dealing with those things, right? The Quran and things of that nature, because the Quran teaches a lot of things against the Bible in its, in its hypocrisy, right? So you can bring it out. Go ahead. Uh, this is the book from Babylon to Timbuktu. Uh, it, it's chiefly going into the birth of Islam. Right? That's that's the name of the chapter, the birth of Islam. Uh, I'm going to get straight to the point. Right? It said, after Muhammad became a camel driver, he traveled to remote and intriguing lands. Right? He led his caravans to Persia, Syria, and Egypt. All of these places we were captive in. Read on. Transacting business with merchants of every kind. On his business trips, he met Jews. Christians and members of other sections. So it says he met Jews, right? Read on. He interrogated them concerning the tenets of their religion. So he interrogated them saying like, man, what are y'all doing? All right, why do y'all got those strings on? Why y'all face the east when you pray? Why are you kneeling upon your knees? Why you got your hands spread toward the heaven? Why you don't eat pork? Why you don't eat, you know? Read on. He frequented the environment of the Jews. And he did what? He frequented the environment of their Jews. So he kept coming around the Jews, man kind of spying out, man, I, man, you know what, I think I want to create my own religion. Read on. And their rabbis. Right. Mostly because they were merchants and an omnipresent ethnic group. And a what? A omnipresent ethnic group. So even when you go into the Quran, which is what Muhammad basically written down, it tells you that the Lord had favor upon the Israelites. Right. So he, he understood that what? Hey, there's a light on these people, man. He wanted to kind of hey, let me see if I could take some of their light. Let me do what they're doing so, you know what I'm saying, I could shine like them. Because when we keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, hey, we the greatest thing on the earth. That's right. right, read on. Because he could not read or write, his ears were attentive. 
right? And key to everything that the Jews related to him. You see that? Muhammad learned and extracted much from the Jewish religion. And we know that this word Jewish is just some, you know, basically it's talking about what? The Lost Age of Commandments, read on. And compounded it with his new religion. With his what? With his new religion. So he compounded it with his new religion. Islam. Islam, right? So this is how Islam came together. He kind of saw what we were doing. He said, you know what? I kind of want to take some of that. I'm going to do that. Put it together. Make Islam, right? That's what happened. So that's why you see a lot of our brethren. Give me Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28 and verse 64 because this is a curse that our Lord told us would be on us, right? That we would even fall into that doctrine of Islam. That's why you see a lot of so-called black men in the nation of Islam. I mean, you have the uh, Lou, the minister Farrakhan's and things of that nature, Kevin Gates and all of these people coming into Islam. Let me ask you a question. Where do most African-Americans come into Islam in? In prison, in jail, right? In captivity. And where do we get Christianity from? We could, we got, but they gave Christ, they gave Christianity. Right. Who what? Right, and that's what the jail system is. Right. Right. That's exactly what happened. Right. So, the same way they gave Christianity and slavery is the same way you really you receive Islam and slavery, which is jail. Jail is like modern day slavery. See what I'm saying? So it's the same way. You go when we was enslaved, we was getting Christianity, okay, boom, that's what I'm gonna run with. Now when you're in jail, you go in there, you get Islam, right? I'm a Muslim now, right? Bring that out. They said that's a curse. Remember those curses we were showing you? Right? The Lord said that these that would happen to us. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Right? And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Right? From the one end of the earth. Right? Even to the other. Uh-huh. And there thou shalt serve other gods. What the Lord say? Thou shalt serve other gods. He said we're going to serve other gods. Right? Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And we didn't know these gods. Read on. Even wood and stone. It said wood and stone. That wood is what? Talking about the Christianity Christ, uh, cross. Right? That's that wood that we would be serving. A white Jesus. Right? In Christianity. Right? And stone, right? Which is talking about that Mecca cobblestone, which Islam uh, refers to as holy. They go there once a year, travel around the stone, and do all this weird ass shit to it. And they believe that there's a God inside that stone. They believe that, right? So the Lord said, hey, man, y'all are going to get scattered across these nations, four corners of the earth. You're going to be in all these places, and you're going to serve other gods, wood and stone. When you look at African Americans, the two main religions that they're in is Christianity and Islam. Right? So the Lord prophesied these things unto us. So we know that these things, once you, once you understand what the Heavenly Father is telling us, we already know where to stay away from, man. We ain't dealing with no damn Islam, man. That's, that's folly. They teach that you can eat pork, man, if it's the last thing on the earth, right? When we go into this Bible, we can find two accounts where our forefathers rather died and transgressed the law of the Lord. But in Islam, they tell you, hey, I mean, don't eat pork, but, you know, if it's the last thing on earth and you about to die, go ahead and eat it. You know what I'm saying? That's two different spirits. One's ready to die for the Lord. The other one's kind of giving in at the last minute, right? We're not dealing with Islam because it's a watered-down Israelite doctrine, right? But nevertheless, we were uh, talking about repentance, right? So to repent, you have to, you have to confess and forsake your sins, meaning you can't do these sins anymore, right? Secondly, you have to what? You have to uh, face the east, head uncovered. Your wife's head needs to be covered, right? Hands spread towards heaven, right? Kneeling on your knees, right? That's how you repent unto the Heavenly Father, right? So uh, let me give your wife one more commandment, right? Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5, right? Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy, right? 22 and 5, right? And it reads, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Right. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Right. So the Lord said a woman can't wear pants and men cannot wear dresses. Right. That's just, that's, that's just how the Lord looks at it. Right. So, you know, no more, no more pants. You got to put on a dress. Right. Because when we look at, even when we look at where the dresses came from, I believe it was around 1940 in America. Because before then, women were wearing dresses. You could look at pictures of slaves picking cotton in dresses, right? So it wasn't no pants. 
even when you deal with the exactly because we, even when you deal with that proverb they say what I, who wears the pants in a relationship right what are they dealing with who's the man basically right who wears the pants in a relationship when you look at it down at the bathroom the woman's bathroom has a dress on the man's bathroom has pants on right but what hey the, this society has tricked us right first they started with what well now there's a there's women pants right there's a there's a uh there's a section where women can buy pants for them. These are woman pants, right? And now what are they doing? These are men's dresses, right? No, 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 that's, that's folly, right? That's confusion, right? Men wear pants, women wear dresses. That's commandment of the Lord. He said all that do so are an abomination. So, uh, them, what's his name? Uh, Dwayne Wade's son wearing them damn dresses, that's an abomination, right? And women wearing pants to the Lord is abomination. White women started wearing pants because they wanted to rebel against men Right and say, hey, we want to be able to do the same things you can. We don't want to be women in the household. We don't want to take care of the babies and just cook and clean. Right? We want to be men too. We want to do the things that you can. Right? But the Bible doesn't say that we're equal. Right? Because if the Bible said the Bible said that what? God is is the is the head, and then it's Christ. Right? Christ told you to what? Hey, the Father is greater than I. Right? Christ is above the man. Right? Christ is obviously greater than us. You see what I'm saying? So if he says the head of the man, the the head of the woman is the man, that means that a man is greater than a woman, and that's just the divine order that the heavenly Father has set up. And what we have to do is we have to get back to understanding that what there's divinity in the role that the heavenly Father gave us. You see what I'm saying? So because what what tends to happen a lot is when you look at society today. This world is given into the hands of the wicked. That's in the book of Job, right? So we understand that everything that they're implementing today is against the Bible, right? So that's why you see what women empower over men, especially in the black community. Who runs the churches? Yeah, there's a man pastor. Now you got women pastors, but nevertheless, yeah, there's a man pastor. But behind the scenes, who's running everything? All the women, right? The women run the church, right? When you look at, yeah, when you look at, because... Even though, I know for my family, right, all the women would go to church on Sunday and the kids, right? But my uncles, my dad, everybody, they stayed at home. They didn't even go to church. Like, it was just the women that went to church, right? And when, really, when you think about it, right, it's because you could take that all the way back to the story of Adam and Eve, right? The woman being deceived, right? Because they're the weaker vessel. So Satan's going to do what? He's going to come unto the woman because he knows it's easier for him to deceive that person because a woman is naturally made to be led, right? A man is a natural leader, right? That's why it's harder to tell a man, you know, you need to follow these laws, statutes, and commandments than women. Sometimes, not a lot of times, women understand this because why? They need direction. They're looking for leadership, right? But a man is kind of a leader. You can't kind of tell a man what to do. You're going to tell me I got to do this, that, and the third. Men don't want to hear it, right? But it, a, a woman is always looking for direction. She's looking for leadership, whether they admit it or not, right? So that's why it's easier for Satan to, to lead you this way, a woman this way, right? So that's why it's imperative that our men come back to the law, statutes, and commandments to lead the women, right? Because when the men are in the law, statutes, and commandments, they're following Christ. So it's, it's no problem for a woman to follow a man who's following Christ. You see what I'm saying? And there's no problem for a woman to follow a man who's following Christ, which Christ is following God, right? So that's why our nation is the way it is right now, because we have two things going on. Women being the men, and we have men being the women. They following their wives. See what I'm saying? It's that, that's just not the divine order that the Lord set up. Right. Yeah, that's, that's completely all. Right. So, yeah. That, it's become, they legalize it. Everybody's just coming out. Because they literally wicked. Everywhere you go, you see it. Yeah. Since I've been here in Houston, I, I walked like a hundred yards, I see one. We literally saw one today. Yeah, we're here and there all the time. Like, a a, a damn transformer. Every, everywhere I go, they're there. They're there. Like, man, this is bad. And, and you got men that put on the wigs and things of that nature. And then you got men that's changing the women. You got, yeah, you got men that's women. You got women. Right. That's crazy. Go ahead, King. They have on the nails and all that. Bali. They've been trying to get you, um, you know, acclimated to that for years on years. Right. Uh, they got the, the 
our men in movies putting on dresses. Right. And right. And as well as um, yeah. Shanae, right. Martin, yeah. all, the, all those right. things. Obama came in that we all looked up to. Black president since that had us all messed up. He's the one that passed the law to gay marriage. Yeah, he did more. Obama did more for the gays than and he did for blacks. Everybody like, yeah, Obama did so He did the worst. Thing. He was a puppy. He was a puppy. He was literally a puppet, a face to say, look, here we gave you guys, we gave you niggas something. It was a black president, right? But what? Hey, we understand that what? Hey, they're going to, right, he wasn't even, he wasn't even, he wasn't even an Israelite. Nevertheless, right, they put him up there to say, we gave you somebody, right? And then what? What did he do? He did everything for gays, right? He, he implemented the whole LGBTQ movement. He didn't do shit for black people, right? So we understand that what? That's why we. That's why it told you in Leviticus, I uh, mean uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68, that uh, no man will redeem us. Right? That's talking about Obama and things of his nature. They're not going to be able to redeem us. So give me Revelation 14 and 12. Give me James chapter 2 and verse 20, and we. I'm gonna leave you off with these two scriptures, brother. Revelation 14 and 12. Give me James 2 and 21. The book of James chapter 2 and verse 20. Right. Like, but will thou know, O vain man, right? that faith without works is dead? What the Lord say? Faith without works is dead. Right, so it says faith without works is dead, brother. Right, so if you truly want to believe in the Heavenly Father, you have to have works behind that. If you truly want to have faith in his son, who the world calls Jesus, but his name is Yahweh Shah, right? If you truly want to have faith in him, right, there has to be a work behind it. Right, let's get those works. Revelation 14 and 12. Revelation 14 and 12. Right. Here is the patience of the saints. Of the who? Of the saints. And who are the saints? That's that one third, right? Because you heard that song, the saints go marching in. Right, the saints are those who are getting into heaven. Read on. Here are they that keep the commandments that of God. That do what? That keep, that keep the, the commandments of God. That's your works. Read on. And the faith of Jesus. And the what? And, and the, the faith, faith of Jesus. Jesus. Which is Yahweh Shai, right? So your faith is met perfect. With what? Keeping the commandments. Give me 1 John 2 and verse 1. So like, this is the last preset, I promise. 1 John 2 and 1, and then 1 John 2 and 3. 1 John 2 and 1. Right. My little children, these things write I unto you, uh -huh. that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So the first thing is what? Don't sin, brother. No more sinning, right? Because when you even deal with Christ and his accounts, right, when... You, the Christian church loves to butcher this account. They literally butcher the account of the woman that was found committing adultery. And they go to that account to say, no one can judge us, right? No one's allowed to tell us anything. No one can say you're in sin, right? When, when in actuality, right, that account is talking about what? Christ said, can you condemn this woman? Meaning, can you kill her for the things that she's doing? No, you can't do that. Why? Because Christ came to bring mercy, right? All the things that we're doing, Hey, just buying something from the store on the Sabbath day is punishable by death, right? Cleaning your room on Saturday is punishable by death. The things that we were doing, all of us should be put to death for right now. We should be dead, right? But because Christ, we have grace and mercy to get ourselves right, right? So in that account, what? Christ came to bring that woman mercy and grace, right? But he told her what? You're, go and sin no more. Right? So the first thing is, brother, you have to understand that what? You have to offend less and sin no more. Read on. Verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. And this is talking about Christ, having that faith in Christ. This is how you know you have faith in Christ. Read on. If we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. Read on. He that said, I know him. He that said he has faith in Christ. And keep his, not his commandments. Doesn't have works. Is a liar. Is a liar. Faith without works is dead. Read on. And the truth is not in him. Read on. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. And that's how you perfect your love for God, by keeping his commandments. Read on. Hereby know we that we are in him. That's how you know that you're in Christ. Read on. He that said he abided in him. He that said that he's in Christ. Read on. Of himself also to walk even as he walked. And Christ was a man without sin. Right, so it says that if you say that you abide in Christ, you ought to be striving to walk even as Christ walked. Christ kept a beard on his face, right? So what does that mean you need to do, brother? You gotta grow your beard out. Christ wore fringes. So what does that mean you need to do, brother? 
you gotta wear your fringes, right? That's men, woman, and child, right? Everybody gotta have fringes on, right? And the fringes, are man, hey, like, you know, this is, this is not a hard thing. People make this so hard. They make the commandment so hard, but that's just, that's a testament of their true heart. They truly don't love the, the Heavenly Father. They truly don't want to keep his commandments. Hey, you tell me, man, hey, God said, you know, if I say I love God, you tell me, hey, man, God said, you know, get this on the thing. I'm going to kind of say, well, where? How do I get them? Where do I get these from? Where, where did y'all get those fringes from? If you tell me, hey, the Lord said don't shave your beard off, you ain't got to tell me twice. That's enough convincing for me. Why? Because I fear the Heavenly Father, right? I know that what? Hey, you could get, you could damn. A lot of people don't understand that they receive judgment from the Heavenly Father every day. Everything is spiritual. Everything works on a spiritual frequency, right? So transgressing the law of the Lord, right? Transgressing the law of the Lord is always spiritual. That's Romans chapter 8, right? The law is spiritual in itself. So when you're obedient to the Heavenly Father, you don't necessarily need to understand these things. All you need to know is that, give me Ecclesiastes uh, 12 and, uh, you know what I want. Manasseh's our favorite precept. What, yeah, what is it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, Romans 7 and 16. So lock here. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. Right? You know, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. I can't hear you. I, they, they talking loud. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It says, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Read on. Fear God and keep his commandments. Do what? Fear God and keep his commandments. Read on. For this is the whole duty of man. This is what? This is the whole duty of man. Your whole job is to fear the Heavenly Father and keep his commandments. Right? So when he says to do something, your only job is to do it. You don't got to do a damn thing on this earth but be an Israelite and keep the commandments. That's it. Right? Read on. For God shall bring every work into judgment. What the Lord say? For God shall bring every work into judgment. The Lord's going to bring every work into judgment. When you chose not to get the fringes, when you chose to shave that beard off, when you chose to eat pork, when your wife chose to put those pants on, it says the Lord's going to bring every work into judgment. Read on. With every secret thing. With what? With every secret thing. See, men are so vain, they think that, you know, this they're, they're doing something in secret. Right? The Lord sees everything. That's in the book of Sirach. His eyes are brighter than 10,000 times the sun. Right? Read on. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. So the Lord is going to bring every work into judgment, whether it's good or it's evil. The Lord is going to bring it into judgment. Hey, that brother put his fringes on today. Check. Good job. Right? Or he's going to say what? Hey, that brother didn't put his fringes on. Yep. We're going to keep that on. He sinned again. Right? He's going to bring these things into judgment. Read on. Was there more on that? That was it on that? Right? So he's going to bring these things into judgment on the day of judgment. Right? So in these days, these last days, we got to keep these commandments and make haste to do that. Right? Because we understand that the Lord is merciful, but Sirach 5 says the Lord, mercy and wrath come from the Lord. Right? Yeah, he's merciful. Right? But if you're dependent on mercy and you keep transgressing him, you're going to receive that wrath. You're going to feel the Heavenly Father. Right? Because we read what? Hey, the Heavenly Father is a man of war. Right? He's, he's somebody not to be played with. A lot of that's the problem in Christianity. They they preach this soft love. Ooh, you know, I'm gonna give you a hug all day, God. The Lord is not playing. The Lord is not playing with our people, man. So Lord willing, you know what I'm saying? You come into these laws, that you commandments, brother, right? Hey, and we out here every Saturday for sure. We out here every Saturday. Word. What part of Georgia? Okay. I don't all that white Oh yeah. 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 They racist as hell. Yeah, I'm from I'm from the, the, the Lord Georgia said they literally team. wicked, man. Damn. How far are you from Atlanta? Four hours. Four hours? Yeah. Tallahassee, Tallahassee, Florida. How far are you from Orlando? Uh, five hours. Five hours? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't drive there. Orlando, I don't drive there. Atlanta's closer to him. Yeah. Atlanta, Atlanta's closer to you, right? So, basically, uh, what I was going to let you know is that in Atlanta and in Florida, right, we have brothers out there as well. You know what I'm saying? So, if you want to 
reach out to them and congregate with them. You know, um, you got a WFI Atlanta.